guys so the first step is making the terrazzo pieces so what I'm doing is I'm taking polymer clay and I'm gonna bake it according to my clay's instructions so now that my polymer clay is baked I'm gonna slice them into small pieces what I will say is I bake them twice um, the baking time so instead of 15 minutes I baked them for 30 minutes and honestly that was a big mistake as you can see here I'm having a difficult time cutting it it was so hard so um, what I would recommend is um, if you're gonna take this step just cut the pieces prior to um, baking the polymer clay cut them up first and then bake them and then it's gonna be an easier step I had a really hard time cutting these pieces and I was really starting to get annoyed, but at least I made this video and you guys can learn from my mistakes. So here I'm just placing the first layer of my pieces in random areas on top of the mold. So whenever I'm doing any resin projects, I make sure that I weigh it on the scale um, because I'm always using a one-to-one -one ratio and I want to make sure that everything is accurate. So yeah, anytime you're using a resin that requires both part A and part B to be equal, make sure that you just put it on a scale and weigh it out because you know it's always going to be accurate and you won't have any problems curing. And in case anyone is wondering, because there are so many videos on YouTube and no one seems to share how much you need, I actually, um, I seen somewhere that these molds um, carry 200 grams of resin. So I used 200 grams and I had a little left over. So around 200 just to be on the safe side. So before I mix in parts A and parts B together, I like to put both parts in hot water. Um, this warms up the parts of the resin um, so that it's easier to stir and also helps with the air bubbles. So now I'm going to color my resin with resin ink. Um, when coloring the resin, I like to color just the one um, part first. Um, I feel like if you do it this way, it doesn't mess with the working time. Sometimes when people um, do resin projects, they usually mix both A and B together and then add the coloring. But I like to do it one by one so I can take as long as I want with achieving the best color. So yeah, just keep working little by little and you can just do one part. And then when it's time that uh, you feel like you have the right color, then you can mix the two together. So here I'm pouring parts A and parts B into a bigger container and then I'm going to mix them until they're fully combined. I usually mix them about 3 to 4 minutes. So here I'm just dumping the remaining pieces into the resin. I'm going to give it a good mix and then I'm going to pour the resin directly into my mold.
I like to go over the resin um, just to get rid of the air bubbles with a torch but trust me this will be my last time doing that because you can see it started smoking so I'm gonna go ahead and purchase a heat gun from um, Amazon because I don't know the smoking business it just get the crap out of me and I don't want this to happen again <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna do my second tray. So first I'm gonna start out with um, clear resin and I'm gonna fill it like almost half, but not, not exactly half. And then I'm gonna use my torch again. And this is the real reason why I'm never gonna do this again because I burnt the mold. And I'm not gonna lie, I was a little afraid because I don't know what's in these chemicals. And even though the mold is still usable and you don't see it in the finished product, I just don't wanna play around with this. So for this one, I'm gonna mix a multi-surface paint with the resin. What this does is, I'm not sure what's inside of this paint. It's gonna actually turn the paint into pieces. So it's actually reacting against each other and you're gonna see it's gonna give a stone effect. So then I'm gonna pour in some um, matte paint as you see and I'm gonna mix it together. You'll see what I mean at the end when you see the bottom of the cup and all the white turn into little pieces, which gives it like a stone effect, which is super cool. So now I'm gonna take some black peppercorns. Um, I love how it looks, it really gives a legit stone effect. And as you guys know, in one of my previous videos, I did this to polymer clay, and I just love how this looks. So I'm putting some black peppercorn also in my resin mixture. I'm gonna mix it up and then I'm gonna pour it directly into my mold. So pay attention to the bottom of the cup. You can see all the white pieces and it gives it like a little mini terrazzo look, which I love. Um, honestly, this wasn't done purposely. I really was trying to make it a little cl cloudy, add in the white. I didn't realize that I was using multi-surface paint, and I think it's something in that paint that, um, you know, reacts against the resin. So yeah, I discovered something new. So again, I'm using the torch for the last time, <laughs> and then I'm gonna marble it at the end. So both trays have been cured for a full 36 hours and I'm just removing it from the mold. You can cure it at 24, but I don't know. I like it to be super sturdy and I wanna make sure that it's gonna be completely flat and completely sturdy. So I let mine cure for a full 36 hours. And yeah, I like how they came out. <laughs> 